Bible. This capstone weighs exactly 3,300 pounds. 33, the most sacred number in all Freemasonry. We talk about that in depth in several of our videos before you can contact us or other ministries that are carrying that and get a copy of that video. But this capstone at the top, and I want you to get this imagery here, because Dan Brown reveals in the lost symbol that buried underground, the, cap, the, um, the cornerstone of Washington's monument, it's not actually, you cannot go to Washington's Monument and look around the outside edges for, for the, uh, the cornerstone. It's not there, right there at ground level. It's buried deep underground. And inside of this cornerstone of Washington's Monument, buried deep in the ground, is a Masonic Bible. The symbol for the lost word of Freemasonry. The lost word of Freemasonry, and I want you to get this. Jesus is the revealed, found, discovered Word of God. The Antichrist, then, is the lost, concealed, buried, hidden Word. The Antichrist, the opposite. Jesus speaking is, is the Word of God, the key in silence. Silence is the opposite of speaking. I want you to get this imagery because that's exactly what is revealed in the lost symbol is that this Bible in this cornerstone buried underneath Washington's monument is a symbol of the beast locked away in the pit. But one of these days, and Langdon shows you this symbolism because what he does is, is that he ascends up to the top of Washington's monument via a spiral staircase, a winding staircase, something, you know, that looks like DNA. And he ascends up to the top to the point of illumination or Godhood. This is the same thing that's given to us in the symbolism of the Eastern mystic practice called Kundalini. Kundalini teaches that at the base, the bottom, buried, hidden, the base of your spine is a coiled up serpent. Remember the beast gets his power from the serpent, the dragon. At the base of your spine is a coiled up serpent. Through mystical rites and rituals and trances and all kinds of stuff, this serpent uncoils itself in a spiraling way like DNA and ascends up the 33 bones of your spinal column to the cap, the top, the head, the position that Christ is. Christ is the head and we are the body. And so it ascends up the 33 bones of your spinal column to give mankind illumination. That's exactly what Langdon was portraying. In fact, he mentioned that it was just like Kundalini. Uh, Kundalini is one of those things that we're seeing creeping into the church right now. Church people, pastors giving people illumination by rituals and things like that. But here's what, I, here's what God showed me this morning. This is what made the doodads stand up, go up and down my back. Not like Kundalini. It was just amazing that I saw this. I was looking at a word, a word that I, you see frequently used in Freemasonry. Here is the symbol for the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Notice the triangle, notice the double-headed eagle, that's the two kingdoms. Uh, notice the image of a crown, notice the number 33, and then notice that they have a, a slogan, Ordo Ab Keo. The Ordo part refers to order, a new world order. The ab chaos means out of chaos comes order. I looked up the word chaos this morning. Check it out. The etymology of the word chaos that we use all the time, you mean like confusion and tearing and, and on all these things, the word chaos comes from a Greek word, K-H-A-O-S, which is the word for the abyss, the pit, hell. Taken in its literal form, and remember, Masons always hide things in plain sight. Taken in its literal form, the phrase ordo ab chao literally means that a new world order is coming out of the pit. It's rising up to take over planet earth. That's the religion of the beast in the last days. In all the studies that I've done on Freemasonry over the years, I can, I can kind of see these things now in different forms. Things that are buried, whether underground or under a sea. 
always referring to the beast that's going to rise up in the last days. How about Atlantis? Atlantis is a lost city. It's been buried under the ocean. Remember Pharaoh and his kingdom? Buried underground. This is the kingdom that existed before the flood in the, last, in the, in the early days. It's a picture of the kingdom that's going to rise up. Atlantis rising. Remember, that's what uh, Francis Bacon wrote about uh, in his work, The New Atlantis. And that's what was, in his mind, epitomized this new world called America. So Atlantis is a picture of, of a beast kingdom buried under the sea and going to rise up in the last days. The Emerald Tablet of Thoth. Thoth is this king that was killed and is buried and this tablet of secret mysteries, the lost word of Freemasonry is buried with him and it's going to be revealed one of these days. The Alchemist Philosopher's Stone. If you've read Harry Potter, you know what that is. The Alchemist Philosopher's Stone, the Philosopher's Stone is buried underground. It's hidden away, it's secret and it needs a key to unlock it. The Masonic character of Hiram Abiff. Hiram Abiff was murdered by three ruffians, was buried underground. Acacia or thorns cover his grave and he awaits a secret grip to bring him back to life or to raise him out of that pit or that grave in the last days. He needs a key. Osiris, the god, the Egyptian god who was murdered and body parts scattered all over the earth and buried and hidden and secreted away and he awaits resurrection in the last days. Hermes Trismegistus, which means thrice majestic. He is the great, he is a picture of this king in the former days who was killed, destroyed, buried by the flood and awaits resurrection in the last days. Here's something that when I found out about it, it just, I mean, it floored me. I've been doing uh, talks in this broadcast about the, uh, the ruler of Iran, uh, Ahmadinejad. Ahmadinejad is what's known as a Twelver. He belongs to a, like a secret society in Iran that is centered around this idea of the return of the Twelfth Imam Mahdi, the great exalted prophet, priest, king of the kingdom of Allah. I, you know, and, and, and Ahmadinejad was always talking about how he's going to bring in the kingdom of the Mahdi in the last days. And I'm going, this guy needs to be watched. I think he's scary. I think he's serious. And I had this concept, you know, that, you know, like... Um, Muhammad the prophet rose up into heaven, you know, was carried into heaven and all this stuff to be with Allah. So I had this idea that the 12th Imam Mahdi, the, the returning of him, he was going to come down from heaven. And by the way, they have this concept that says that the Imam Mahdi is going to return with Jesus, Isa. Uh, and Jesus is going to show up to all of us Christians and say, you idiots, you had it all wrong. You shouldn't believe that Bible. You should believe the Koran. Everybody needs to be a Muslim. That's what they say Jesus is going to do when he comes with the Imam Mahdi in the last days. So watch this. I thought that the Imam Mahdi was like going to float down from heaven and kill all the infidels and take over the world for Islam. Boy, was I wrong. I found out that the Imam Mahdi, there's a, there's a term that refers to him.